السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم um, Today in Shara we'll continue talking about testing hypotheses This is the second lecture in this session uh, Let's start with what we have covered last time So we started with the example of uh, spreading coronavirus since it concerns the whole world now um, So the question that we wanted to answer uh, using what we will study in this session is the following are infected cases in different countries proportional to their populations which means that the infected cases in each country is proportional to the population of that country um, and uh, the model that we have here uh, is that uh, we will assume that the infected cases spread more in large populations so if we have a country that has large population then we should observe more infected cases in that country or in other words the uh, the infected cases propagate uniformly according to populations so um, what we will learn in this session inshallah is how to evaluate the model or how to evaluate the, the quality or the goodness of the model and we started already um, uh, using some data so we had two data set two data sets as we <coughs> as we saw last time uh, the first one that has the corona uh, statistics for each country we have the number of infected cases this is uh, i think two or three days ago and we also have the data set that has the uh, world population um, in order to deal with uh, with what we need from these two data sets we actually need the first two columns here and the, uh, the second and the third column here so we'll do the join between the two data sets to get only the infected cases and um, the population for each country so this is the data set now that we will focus on we need to see if the number of cases in each country uh, is proportional to the population of that country so the first attempt to try to answer this question was by plotting uh, we, by having a scatter plot so we have a scatter plot between the cases and the population and this is what we got last time we got this plot and um, uh, we said that the these two points are outliers this is China where we have large population and large number of infected cases and this is India when we have large population but a very low number of cases um, so we tried also to remove the outliers by focusing only on the countries that have population that is less than 500 million so if we do that and we also plot we again uh, have a, a scatter plot then we will see this plot still uh, we have of course also some outliers but still we cannot have uh, a concrete conclusion from that plot so we started to think about the two distributions that we have the distribution of uh, the cases the infected cases over countries and the distribution of the population over countries so uh, we get uh, we so we we, we uh, uh, what we started to do is to add a new column for each of these two distributions so this is the distribution of uh, of the cases and, and uh, of course we can get the distribution of the cases by dividing each uh, number of cases in, the, in, in each country by the sum of the cases and this is uh, what we will get so we will call this percent cases and similarly we will do uh, for uh, the population so we will now we have two columns two new columns in the data set the percent cases and the percent population now the question was how these two distributions are similar how far they are or in other words how far they are from each other so we started by thinking uh, of subtracting them because when we have two uh, uh, values two quantities to know how far each other uh, how far uh, uh, one is, is far from the other um, we subtract them so we thought that maybe we can subtract or we should subtract the two distributions now 
In order to understand what we are doing here, let's get back to the slides and see when we have two probability distributions, what the difference between them means. So let's say that we have now the gray and blue, uh, sorry, the yellow and blue um, uh, distributions. As we will see here, um, over the categories, some categories, they are very similar. Maybe the difference will be zero for that category. Uh, for other categories, the, first, the yellow one is higher, like this one and this one. And uh, sometimes also the blue one is higher, dark blue here. Um, if we look at numbers, uh, and let's say that these are the two probability distributions that we have, if we subtract them, you will see, of course, as we just mentioned, some of the numbers will be positive and the others will be negative, of course, excluding the zeros. Um, because the sum of each is 1, so whenever we have an increase in one category, we will have, or an, an increase in some categories, we will have the same decrease in the other categories. So we would expect that the total positive difference, which is 0.3 here, is exactly the same like the total negative difference, as we, we, we also see here. Which means that if we just sum these differences, as uh, uh, we will see in the, in, the, in the code, we will just get zero. So that, that's not what we want. What we want is to try to get a value that will uh, determine the, how different uh, one distribution from the other. So one can think of getting only the positive differences. So we can say 0.3. We can only look at when we have a positive difference and say this is point, this is the, the, the difference would be 0.3. Or in other words, the uh, the absolute value of the negative differences, which would be the same. Or in a different way that will give us the same thing, we can uh, easier we can uh, get the absolute value of all the differences, like what we are doing here, which will be 0.3 times 2 because they are the same, and divide by 2 to get the uh, the amount of one side only, either the positive or the negative. So in this case, the, the difference will be uh, evaluated as 0.3. So the value of the difference here will be 0.3. This way, we call it total variation distance. Total variation distance. And this is one way of comparing or actually computing the difference between two probability distributions. There are other ways, but this is the way that we will study in this session. So let's go back and see how we can compute the uh, total variation difference, or TBD in short, between the two distributions that we have. So we have this sum here, as we expect, we'll get zero. Of course, we didn't get zero, we get, uh, we get very, 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 very small value, which, is, which amounts to zero, actually, if we do the sum. But if we sum the same thing, cases distribution minus uh, population distribution, and we take the absolute value and um, uh, and divide by two. Then, so let's see what's going on here. Cases, cases distribution. Then we will get what we call TVD or total variation difference. That's the total variation difference uh, between the uh, the distribution of the infected cases and the distribution of the population. So this value is 0.69, so it's very close to 0.7. What can we get from that value? What is the meaning of that value? Can we say now that this is a very large difference and that means that the model is not good? Or maybe that number can happen? So we should think how likely that number can actually happen. If the chance uh, is high that we can get this number by taking a random sample from the population, then maybe the model is okay. But if it's very unlikely that we can get that number, then maybe we can say that the model uh, 
is uh, is not um, uh, is not giving us any evidence. Um, so the, the data the, the model doesn't uh, fit um, the data, or the model is inconsistent with the data. Um, so let's get back to the model and see how we can actually get um, um, get to think about how likely this number can be. So if we get back to the slides here and we get back to the model and think about the model, the model indicates that number of infected cases in country X is proportional to the population of X. So that means that if that means that the infected cases are a random sample from the entire world given the distribution of its population. Let's see that in uh, visually. So let's say that this is the population and the colors here indicate different countries. And of course the number of people in each country represent the, the, uh, the uh, relative population of that country with respect to the entire population, which is the world. And let's say that we take a sample from that population. Remember that the question was about whether the spread of the infected cases is proportional to the population of each country, which means that if I have the entire world and I take a sample, a random sample of, um, uh, of the world, then, this will be similar to what we see actually in the uh, in the sample of the infected cases. Or in other words, that the infected cases is a random sample of the population. So if we take as a random sample of the population, we probably get something like this, which should somehow resemble uh, uh, should resemble the the actual distribution of the population in the world. So, for example, here the black country has uh, maybe higher distribution, higher uh, uh, population, so we get two blacks here, and so on. So, this is one sample, right? So, this is one sample, and we know now how we can, uh, we can compute the total variation difference between the distribution of the sample and the distribution of the population. Um, now, if we do that by simulation, then we have to sample from the population multiple times, which is uh, um, uh, the, the number of sample, the sample individuals should be the, uh, the number of cases, infected cases, and then get the distribution of the, uh, of the sample over the categories, which are the, the countries in our case, and then compare that with the original population. So let's see here um, how we do that. So let's say that this is the population now and we got a sample, a random sample. Now the population has original distribution, which is the distribution of the population in each country. That's what we have from the data set. And also, we can also compute the distribution of the sample, right? So this is a, a random sample. We got these individuals in the sample. We can compute the, the, uh, the distribution of that sample over the same categories, which are the countries here. If we do that, then we can compute the statistic out of that sample, which will tell us something about how far this distribution is from that distribution. Remember why we are doing that. We are doing that because we assumed in the model that the infected cases are just a random sample from the population. So we want to simulate this process so that we know how likely the distribution of a random sample can be if it is taken from the world population. So in each sample, we will compute the total variation distance and, um, and we will repeat that multiple times as we did before. Okay, so 
to get one the, the to get one value of the statistic we need one sample we get a sample we have to get from the sample we have to get the distribution now we can do that with what we have learned already we we learned so far two ways of uh, of doing random sampling we uh, we learned the choice function that takes a random sample from an array and we also uh, learned the sample function that takes a random sample from a table so we can use that to get the sample the sample individuals and then compute the distribution uh, over the categories from that uh, from that uh, sample from that list of sampled individuals or we can use a, a hand a, a handy function in uh, in the data science package called sample pop uh, proportions so sample proportions it samples at random from a categorical distribution which is the population in the the, the world population over countries in our case so sample proportions takes two parameters takes a sample size and the distribution of the population from which we want to sample but unusually it it will not return the list of individuals uh, the list of sampled individuals instead it returns an array containing the distribution of the categories in the sample because we are actually not interested in the actual uh, list of indi of uh, of individual sampled uh, of sampled individuals uh, we are interested in the distribution of them so directly it gives us back the array that has the distribution of the categories let's use this in our code and see what we will get um, so sample proportions as we said it takes two parameters the sample size and the um, the popular the distribution of the population now let's start with the second one which is the population this distribution and then think about the first one so the first one is the sample size what should be the sample size in this case should it be just a high number like 10,000 or 1,000 or 5,000 or 100,000 what should be that number Remember why we are doing this. We are doing this to see if we take a random sample, which is like the infected cases in our example. If we take the sample of infected cases at random, how likely we can get that distribution in, uh, of, of, of countries in that sample. Then that means the sample size should be the total number of infected cases over the entire world. That's how we will see the distribution of a sample of that size. So we need the total number of cases. So let's get it here. So let's say total cases, which will be the sum over um, the uh, column number one here. So CWP dot column of uh, one. And let's print this to see that number. So that's the total number of infected cases at the time we got the data set. It changed it, it changed it now. Hopefully it will decrease. Actually it cannot decrease because that's the number of total uh, affected, uh, dead, and, and all the, the types of infected uh, people. So anyway, from two or three days, it was like um, 101,000 uh, infected or affected cases. So that, that should be the sample size now. So we should write here total cases. Okay, what should we expect from calling this function? We said that sample, so this is sample, sample proportions function will sample from a distribution from a categorical distribution sample a size of that number and instead of returning back an array of uh, of the uh, sampled individuals it will give us the distribution of the sampled individuals so if we do that we will get a, uh, an array that has the distribution 
Okay, so the size, if we say len, uh, so let's say this is s, if we say len of s, what would you expect here? So that's the length of that array. The length of that array should be the number of, uh, of, uh, of countries, right? Which we have here, uh, nine, 95. We have 10 here and 85 omitted, so we have 95 countries. Okay, so that's what we expect. We have a number, which is the uh, probability uh, for, or the, the, uh, the proportion for each category. And the categories are the contents. Okay, so this is different from choice and sample that gives us an array of length, the sample size, because it gives us the list of the, the sample individuals. Here we just get um, the, uh, the uh, proportions or the distribution. Now we can uh, define a function that um, that will give us, so let's define first the uh, total variation difference function, and then we will define a function that will give, given a sample, it, it, will, uh, uh, it will give us a, a value of the statistic out of the sample. So the total variation difference takes, uh, it's, it's, it, it computes the difference between uh, two probability distributions, let's say x and y, um, and we'll just get um, this from here. So sum of absolute, here x and uh, minus y, of course, over 2. So that's the total variation difference. Now let's, let's try it over the, um, uh, the cases distribution and the population distribution just to make sure that it works. Um, so we didn't say return here. That's why you didn't get any value. So the value here is 0.69 as we saw before. Now let's define uh, a function that will give us the statistic value out of one random sample. So let's call it sample cases. And sample cases um, will, um, will, uh, will return the uh, TVD of a sample, uh, sample proportions. Okay, so um, let me show take this and put it here. So it's just call TVD over the uh, the distribution that we get from the sample, and the of course we want now to compute the difference between the distribution of the sample that we got and the distribution of the model, which is the uh, proportion the population distribution. So this is sample cases. So if we call this uh, once, let's say sample cases, sorry, sample cases, it should give us uh, the total variation difference of a random sample. Okay, now see what the value is, is 0 0.008. So what is this? What is the meaning of this? This is the total variation distance between a random sample from the population or, or between the distribution of a random sample of the population and the original population distribution. Okay? If we call it again, of course, we should get a different number. Call it the third time, we get a different number, and so on. Um, now, of course, you might... Uh, you might uh, you might be tempted to compare these two numbers. Just wait until we have the distribution. So now, what is the um, um, the um, uh, what's the next step? Given that we have one sample, let's get back to the slides here. So the next step is to uh, compute the empirical distribution of the statistic. So here we have just one value. We computed one value of the statistic. Now we want to get a distribution of that. So to get a distribution, as you know, we have to uh, repeat that process multiple times. So one sample, we get the first TVD, then another sample, we get a second TVD, and so on. Uh, maybe we can repeat that 10,000 times. Uh, 
When we do that, now we have 10,000 values. We can look at the distribution. So let's say that this is the distribution of the uh, total variation difference of the random samples that we can get from the world population. So, um, um, so this is that tells us how likely any sample can be if it is taken from the world population. Okay, of course, it's a if it's a uniform sample. Now, this is actually the model. So this is the this is the model. This is the prediction of the model, actually. Okay. So this is uh, this is uh, the uh, the model, the simulated model. Okay. So that means that most of the time the TVD is getting that value. Also, this value is not is not very likely. So this is likely. This is likely. This is likely. This is likely. This is unlikely. This is unlikely, and so on. Okay. So that's the distribution, that's the empirical distribution that we got for the statistic, which is the total variation distance. Now, the data gave us, let's say that the data gave us that number. Okay, remember, the data is coming from, or the value of the, of the statistic for the data is coming from an actual sample. It's not a simulated sample. It's an actual sample, which is, in our example, the infected cases. That actual sample, we compute that the, the total variation dif distance between the distribution in that sample and the, uh, the distribution of the population. If the total variation difference gave us a value that is here, that means that it's uh, it's likely by that model, okay? It is likely by that model to get that value. In that case, so this is of course from the data. In that case, we can say that the model is consistent with the data. The model is consistent with the data. Now, if the data give us a total variation difference that is here instead, that means that it is really unlikely that if that model is true or if that sample coming from that model, it is very unlikely to happen. Okay? In other words, if I have that model and I took a random sample of it, it is very unlikely. It's actually in our data, in our simulation, it didn't happen at all. It's very unlikely that we get this TVD value out of that model. We cannot say it's definitely cannot it, it definitely cannot happen, but we can say it's very unlikely that it happens. If that's the case, then we can say the model is inconsistent with the data because it's very unlikely to happen that getting a sample from that model, we get this value for that statistic. Let's get back to, uh, to our uh, data sets and see which case we will see we will have in, uh, in our example. So remember, we got this distribution from repeating, <coughs> sorry, from repeating the, um, the sampling multiple times. So let's do that here. So let's um, define an array A and let's loop over um, um, let's have a loop of multiple uh, repetitions. In this case, we will do 10,000. So uh, we will have uh, 10,000 here. Now for each iteration, we need to get a sample statistic. By calling samples, sample cases. Okay, so this is one value and we will add it to 
studia lì and just add it there okay so we are done with the loop now um, and we actually ran it let's see the distribution now so again in this loop we are um, um, gathering samples and for each sample we compute the statistic uh, TVD okay so we maybe you should call it sample TVD just to be uh, easier so sample TVD um, and we collect all of these values so if we say a here this should be an array of 10,000 uh, TVDs values now let's draw the histogram um, with this data so we'll call this TVD this column and A and we um, plot a histogram okay now this is the histogram histogram of TVD's values of samples drawn from the world population now let's look at the numbers it seems like in most cases it's around 0 0.007 and 0 0.008 right maybe uh, this one also is likely so it is in that range anyway between 0 0.007 and 0 0.009 or 0 0.001 now, where is the TVD value for the data? Remember, the value for the data was this, right? 0.69. Where is 0.69 here? 0.69 here is maybe outside the screen. Okay, what does that mean? Let's say that it's here. If it's here, or here or here doesn't matter that means that it is very unlikely that the data that we have is a random sample from that distribution right because we tried 10,000 samples none of them gave us a 0.69 maybe if we run the simulation maybe million time we might get one case Maybe 10 million times before we get one case. Or maybe more. Doesn't matter. That also means it's very unlikely to get this data, this uh, infected uh, cases or affected cases sample from that distribution. Which means that the model is inconsistent with the data. So the model doesn't support the data and what we got here doesn't su support the assumption that the data came from the, the, the world population or in other words, the spread of the, uh, of the cases is proportional to, uh, to the population of the world. So the answer, we can say that it's very improbable, very unlikely, so we cannot uh, we cannot accept uh, the uh, the assumption of the model. The model doesn't support uh, the uh, the data. Or in other words, the model is inconsistent with the data. So the answer to our question is no. Okay. So that was um, a real application of um, assessing the quality of a model. So we started with a question. The question is always in, in, in this case, yes or no question. Is the, uh, the, uh, the cases, the corona cases, uh, propagating proportional to the population of countries or not? We built, we had a model in mind, which is, um, which is uh, going uh, with, the, uh, with the question, which is that the infected cases in each country is proportional to its population. We simulated predicted values from that model through uh, multiple samples, 
for each sample we computed how far the distribution of the sample uh, in the sample from the original distribution we computed that distribution of the statistic which is the total variation difference distance and now the last step was to compare the uh, the, the statistic from the data with uh, with the distribution with with the simulated distribution that we got and it we showed that it is very inconsistent so back to the slides if we want to get an overview of our approach to the assessment of models it has three things if we can simulate the data according to the assumptions of the model then we can learn what the model predicts and that's what we did in uh, in our experiment we simulated the data according to the model the model was saying that it is a uniform sample it's a random sample we did a random sample from the uh, population using the sample proportions function we repeated that multiple times we get what the model predicts now we can compare the predictions to the data that we are observed and if the data and the model uh, if, if the data and the model's predictions are inconsistent, then the evidence is against the model. So we cannot say that the model is, uh, is supported in this case. The steps in more detail. First, we need to come up with a statistic to decide whether the data supports uh, the model or not. We need to simulate the, stat the statistic under the assumption of the model, which means that we get a value for the statistic. We draw a histogram of simulated values, which, which will give us kind of predictions of the model. We compute, we compute the observed statistic from the data sample, which is the 0.69 in our case. We compare that value with the histogram to see if it is likely or if it's unlikely to get such value. If the two are not consistent, that's evidence against the model. So, we can, we can refute the model statistically. Um, we will formalize that, inshallah, uh, probably in the next lecture in a, in a, a very well-known framework called uh, hypothesis testing. But before that, in this lecture, we will have another example uh, for model assessment, which is jury selection. So what is jury selection uh, example? It was a case in 1965 in the state of Alabama in the US. There was a, a US citizen called Robert Swain. He was a black man and he was convicted of a specific crime at that time. Now, the decision was taken by a jury consisted of 100 men as usual. So it's called the jury panel. So the panel had 100 men. And the process, the legal process, says that this panel should be a random sample from the set of all eligible population in, uh, in that state. Eligible population of juries in that state. Okay, so across, among all the citizens in that state, there are there is some criteria. Uh, for each one to be eligible or not. So among the eligible population, we take a random sample of size 100, and that should be the jury panel. So what happened in Swain's case was that uh, the population, the eligible population, had 26% of it black, black man, black men. Okay? So 26 of, of the population were black. But surprisingly, in his uh, jury panel, only eight were black. Only eight were black. Eight out of 100. So, of course, there was a question here. How come that the population was, has 26% black men, while the sample only, uh, while we, we get only eight men uh, in the panel to be black. So, one factor in Swain's defense was that kind of all-white jury. So, 
that there's something some something wrong in the distribution in the jury of course this is uh, uh, exaggeration here it's not all white but it's kind of the white words were much more than they should be in the jury the supreme court responded to uh, to the defense saying that the overall percentage disparity the overall overall percentage difference between the uh, population between the distribution of the population and the distribution in the jury panel has been small and reflects no studied attempt to include or exclude a specific a specified number of negroes or black so that means that the supreme court thinks that it can happen if i have a distribution of uh, 26% black and uh, in this case 74% white if i uh, take a random sample from that distribution of 100 men i might get 8 black and the rest will be white okay so that's what the supreme court thinks at the time and thus the uh, the decision was to deny the appeal so Swain was actually eventually convicted of the crime. Um, okay, so this is history. Where is data science here? Where is data science here? Now, what we can do is to check or test the model here. So what is the model? The model is, is that we have a distribution, we have a population in which there is a specific distribution, which is 26% versus 74%. And that we take a random sample from the distribution and see if that will be similar to um, uh, similar to uh, the jury panel or not. So the model is depending or based on uh, what the Supreme Court said. It's just a random sample. Or what the legal actually system says, it's a random sample. So that's the model that we want to test. Let's have, let's, by what we learned in this session, let's do the simulation and see how likely to get a sample of 100 men or 100 individuals from that distribution to be to have eight black uh, and the rest uh, to be white okay so let's do this demo this in this demo we will just run uh, what we have um, instead of just writing okay so we'll start by the population proportions and as we said we have two distributions we have the 26 percent and the uh, 74%. So we have uh, 0.26 and 0.74, that's what we call the population proportions. Now we will use, remember the function sample proportions to get, a, to get, to get one sample from that, uh, from that distribution. Now what is the sample size? As we did in the uh, corona example, the sample size should be the size of the data that we have. In the data that we have, we have 100 individuals, so the sample size should be 100. If we do that sampling, then remember sample proportions will give us back an array of distributions. So here is one sample. We get 0.25 and 0.75, which is close to the original uh, distribution. If we call it again, we get something different, 0.3, 0.7. If we call it the third time, 0 0.19, 0 0.81, and so on. Okay, so let's formalize that in a, a function. Panel black, black men. Now, what is the statistic? Okay, so that's a, 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 a very important question whenever we do this testing. If, if we want to test or to assess the quality of a model, we have to do that by uh, uh, getting a statistic. So what is the, the, the statistic? here that will indicate to us something about what we want to test. So what we want to get here is probably not the difference between the distributions, but we can get the number of 
Uh, we can do that, uh, by the way, but easier is to get just the number of, uh, the predicted number of black men in the sample. Remember that the sample proportions function gives us uh, two numbers in our case, in this case, the uh, proportion of black men in the sample and the proportion of the white men in the sample. So from these two numbers, we can get the predicted number of black men, which is the first number, right, times 100. That will give us the number of uh, black men in that sample. So that's what we, uh, what, that's what we do here. So the item number zero, which is the first number here, times 100 will give us a, um, the predicted number of black men. So if we call it once, we get 24, call it another time, we get 23, and so on. So that's the statistic that we will use in, uh, uh, in, our, uh, uh, in our test. So we have to repeat that multiple times. So this code will repeat it 10,000 times. Um, now, 10,000 is not a magic number. Uh, it can be 5,000, it can be uh, 1,000, it can be 4,000. Um, we just use here 10,000, it should be in, in that range. Um, so for each iteration, we call that function to get the, uh, the new panel, actually the, the, the black, the predicted number of black men in the new panel, and we append it to the panels array. So if we uh, run this, now we get the, uh, the panels, the 10,000 panels. So if we, uh, if we see the panels uh, array, that should be uh, an array of 10,000 numbers. So 21, 27, 28, 25, and so on. Now let's see the histogram of these numbers. So uh, we'll have, uh, we'll have to, uh, to add the column using the panels array and uh, get the histogram. Now let's look at the histogram. The histogram um, is uh, centered around maybe 25 or 26, which is expected, right? So the distribution of the, uh, the, uh, the original distribution that we started with that we are taking the samples from is 26% versus 74%. And the statistic that we are, uh, that we are showing here is the number of black men, which is in, in a sample of 100, which is uh, predicted to be 26. So the, uh, the distribution is, is centered around 26, but it can uh, go up to maybe here is 14 and up to uh, maybe 38 or 39 here. So that's the range of the values of black men, or the values of the number of black men in the samples that we got, in the 10,000 samples that we got from that population. Now the next step is to compare this distribution with the observed value. What is the observed value? Remember, the observed value was the number of black men in the uh, in the jury panel, in the actual jury panel. What was it? It was eight. It was eight. So the the value of the statistic from the data is eight, and the values of the statistic from the simulation is that distribution. Now, where is eight here? Eight is somewhere here, right? So this is eight. So that's the value of the data, of the statistic from the data. Now, when we compare that value with the, from, uh, with the distribution, what can we conclude? Is the data, is the model consistent with the data or inconsistent? Now, eight is here, which means that we actually didn't get any sample, any value of eight in the 10,000 sample. Now, maybe if we, uh, we run this for 1 million, as we said in the, uh, uh, in the uh, coronavirus example, maybe if we sample 10, uh, 1 million times, maybe we can get one or two uh, of eight black men in the sample. But, in, but the distribution will not change much. It is very unlikely that randomly sampling from that distribution will give us eight black men. That's what this histogram is telling us. So we can say that the model is inconsistent with the data. 
So there is no evidence from uh, from that model uh, towards the uh, the data. Okay, so the model doesn't actually supports the data. The model is inconsistent with the data. Now we cannot say that um, it was not a random sample. We can just say it is unlikely to be a random sample. It is unlikely to happen. That's one. The second is that maybe there is something that uh, that maybe there is an assumption in our model or in our process that was not actually accurate. For example, maybe that distribution is not accurate. So a data scientist working with uh, uh, domain experts should look at the data again and verify that this distribution is actually correct. Maybe there's something happened in that state uh, or maybe um, uh, the way that, uh, that these two numbers were estimated is not, um, is not accurate uh, or, and so on. So that's not the scope of, of this lecture, but that's actually the next step in real life is to check whether the data is uh, accurate or the assumptions that we had in the process are accurate or not. But our job here in this lecture stops at comparing the data that we got with the, uh, with the model. You might ask another question, which is, what if the data is, the observed statistic value is here? Is it likely? Um, maybe. Maybe we can say, okay, the model, we cannot say the model is inconsistent. What if it's here? What if it is here? Okay, and so on. So we will discuss that inshallah in the next lecture in, uh, in the, uh, when we generalize this process in a framework called hypothesis testing. So we'll have to stop here uh, for today. Uh, so we cover two examples. Inshallah, next time we'll cover a third example, and then we generalize what we, uh, we we generalize the process that we have learned in this lecture and the previous lecture in the the testing uh, in the hypothesis testing framework. So thank you for listening, and uh, Inshallah, I hope to see you or at least talk to you very soon. Assalamu alaikum